Hello everyone, my name is Rodrigo. I'm from the Technical University of Denmark and in the next couple of minutes I'm going to be talking about a piece of research titled Unveiling Opportunities for Local Circular Biocomic Systems Using an Open Innovation Approach. You can see my co-authors at the bottom of the first slide here. And to start this presentation I just want to go through um, the topics that we are going to address in the next couple of minutes. I'm going to provide a brief background on the bigger project that motivated this research and um, the objective of our piece of research. And then some of the methods that we are following, that we have followed and that we will follow uh, in the future. Uh, because it's on an ongoing project, some expected results and further research or perspectives of further research that we can do. So a little background on what motivated this project. There is a bigger project here in um, Denmark and Sweden called PowerBio. And within this project, we are trying to find added value uses of biomass waste. Um, and those biomasses are seaweed and eelgrass, which uh, you find uh, at the beach when there is eutrophication. There's a lot of uh, seaweed that is washed up on the beach. Also grass clippings from roadside grass and straw from agriculture. So those are wastes that today some municipalities here in Denmark and in Sweden, they have to dispose of. And there are, not, there are no value added routes to make use of these biomass wastes. And this project wants to find out what are non-obvious perhaps alternatives of using these um, biomass streams because they are valuable resources and they have lots of um, valuable components in them. And what are value added routes for using them. So we want to use innovation and perhaps non or, or options that haven't been thought of so far to find out some of the opportunities of using these and uh, recovering the value of these biomasses and extending the supply chain um, as much as we can. So what we have been doing so far to try and find out uh, what are potential added value uses, uh, we have been doing uh, and then some research and there are quite a few activities that we are uh, doing under this umbrella of investigative research. And I'm gonna talk about them in a bit. The second step is once we get enough knowledge on these biomass streams and the challenges that we have in perhaps using them, we will run innovation sprints. And once we are done with these innovation sprints and, the, uh, and having gathered a lot of knowledge on what can perhaps be done with uh, these biomass wastes, we want to establish a stakeholder, a stakeholder dialogue to find out how we can establish businesses to make these products a uh, reality. So in this first step, um, what we want to do first of all, uh, before anything, is get to know more about these biomasses. So what we've been doing is going on field trips, visits to the different sites where we can find these biomasses and gathering more knowledge as much as we can on um, what is the status, the state of this biomass, what is it looking like, where we find them, how we can collect them, and just gathering as much knowledge as possible in terms of what are the components inside these biomasses and what can be done with the, those components. Maybe there are uh, things, you know, specific things inside these biomasses that are very valuable to some industries and some other things are valuable to other industries. So perhaps we can uh, make uses of part of these biomasses or perhaps we can uh, use the biomass as a whole to make uh, a new product. So we are gathering knowledge on that and to help us and uh, to get insights on what has been done already perhaps um, in other parts of the world that haven't um, reached Denmark and Sweden. We are doing a literature review that's part of this investigative research, uh, this uh, investigation of the biomasses and what's uh, in the biomasses. Once we are done with that and when we have it, when we have gathered enough knowledge, uh, we actually started already uh, identifying what challenges we might have and to help us overcome those challenges and find answers to those challenges and help challenges and help us um, uh, answer this 
um, overarching question, how can we establish these cycle of autonomy systems? We are also trying to gather external knowledge that we don't have within the project by uh, using open innovation. And this is our step two. We have just created uh, an innovation challenge, an open innovation challenge called Biobase Tomorrow. And we have two challenges in this uh, open innovation challenge or hackathon or innovation sprint. One of them is how we can uh, create local value by utilizing roadside grass clippings. And the other one is how can we create local value by utilizing seaweed, uh, seaweed and eelgrass. And the idea of these innovation sprints or this innovation challenge is that we run it in two phases. There is a QR code. So if you if you want to go to the landing page of Biobase Tomorrow, which is our innovation challenge, you can just use this QR code. Um, and we want to run it in two phases. We have just launched the call for proposals, which is basically a document containing all the explanation of the challenges that we have, the rules for participating in it, and then we are promoting and recruiting potential participants who can be citizens, uh, small, mid, large companies. Um, they can be uh, students. So we, it can be basically any bio-innovator who might have an idea on um, how to solve the challenges that we have as part of this, um, uh, this innovation sprint. We'll have a Q&A webinar at some point in a couple of weeks from now. Uh, which is sometime before they have to submit the um, idea in phase one. And in this first phase, we basically want to have a brief idea of what a potential solution for these challenges might be. It doesn't have to be something uh, already scaled up. It doesn't have to be very elaborated, but we want to see potential in this idea. Then we'll evaluate, we'll invite the best ranked ideas to a, um, a, a second phase, which is um uh, where we will give more information we will pair them with a challenge team as we are calling him so we have a specialist in the biomass a specialist in the local um environment the place where we find the biomass is a specialist in the business aspects of uh making this idea into a business and we'll also provide workshops for the teams who are invited in the, in the second phase, where they can develop this idea further um, and make it into a prototype and where they can develop also a business case, uh, showing the potential for scaling up and creating value locally, which is what we want with this innovation sprint. Then we'll have a final event where they will show the prototype, they will pitch the idea, and then we'll evaluate and announce the winners. Then there's a package of benefits for the winners where they can use those to further develop this idea into a business. Once we are done with that, we will establish this stakeholder dialogue, which is what we um, is what we set as phase three or step three in our method, this piece of research. Once we know what are the potential products that can be made, we want to have all the private um, initiative partners, so the the businesses that have an idea of how to make um, value added or added value use of these biomasses. And then we want to get the government, which are basically the municipalities that are providing these biomasses or that, that have um, ownership of these biomasses and how they can help perhaps the, uh, the companies, the private initiative into making these ideas um, into a supply chain or a value chain and how we can establish this as a business. So there will be gaps, for example, in the, the supply chain that needs to be in place for these uh, ideas to become a business. And we want to find out in this dialogue how we can fill in these gaps. So it needs to be suitable in terms of what we want with the challenge. So is it actually doing what we wanted it to do? Is it creating local value? Is it also feasible in terms of um, technical aspects, economical aspects? And is it acceptable by the target audience? And how can we bridge all those gaps? So we want to um, address those in this stakeholder dialogue. What we want to get at the end of this 
process is basically a list of the products that can be made from these biomasses, a list of the industries that can benefit perhaps from these products, these potential products. We'll have insights on what aspects or what elements of the biomasses are most valuable, and we'll also get to know what components are perhaps not valued. Um, um, it's uh, one of our jobs will be to find ways to find ways how we can perhaps valorize or value these non-valued um, components as well. And we need to find out what are the supply chain links that are perhaps missing in the local context uh, to establish these businesses and make them sustainable in the long term. There are a couple of things that we know at the end of this project we won't have knowledge on, as I said in the beginning. One of them is the sustainability impacts of these uh, potential products, especially if they come as a substitution or as, as a replacement to uh, an existing product. So maybe it replaces a product that today is made from non-renewable resources, but we need to know what are the potential impacts of these, um, of this new product and this substitution. And if this potential, potentially new product is, um, it, if it becomes mainstream, we might have to harvest the biomass that we are using just as waste today. And what are the potential impacts of harvesting those biomasses instead of just using the wastes? We don't know that. So I think that you was it for this short presentation. Here you have my contact information. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or if you have something to share. Thank you for listening.